Able's in on air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York and New England, where everyone belongs. The Orthodox Union. The Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. The Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. The Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Central Vermont, Habitat for Humanity. Abel Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times. New York Parrot Online Newspaper. Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air. Um, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've been your host. I, I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And on this wonderful program today, we will talk about the services of the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired of, um, of Vermont. But before that, we would like to say special thanks to our uh, sponsors <coughs> Uh, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the partnership of the partnerships of the Division for the Blind in Ver of 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 um, Vermont, and and also the partnership of the Association for the Blind in Vermont, and many 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 others, also including the uh, the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition. Um, we would like to say. Uh, welcome to Dan Norris, the um, Director of Adult Day Services of the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Uh, the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired? The Vermont Association for the Vermont Blind. Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, who, who is here today to discuss how to be independent in your uh, um, apartment, house, or life um, if you are, are blind and Low vision and visually impaired. Welcome to Able Then On Air, Mr. Norris. Happy to be here. Um, tell me the missions and goals of the um, Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Sure. Uh, so, uh, so it, it, as you, you know, the title is pretty long, so we shorten it to VABVI sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so VABVI is uh, dedicated to helping uh, Vermonters of all ages. Um, to be able to be independent and to, to you know, reach their goals and their aspirations as they you know, live their lives as visually impaired individuals. Okay. I see that you brought a treasure trove <laughs> of things that we're going to show. Do you want to ask any questions um, right now, Arlene? Yes. Um, how, how long is, how long, um, what new technology, have, what new technology uh, has come out for the visually impaired, visually and blind. Since you said that, you can go ahead with your treasure, treasures that you had brought with Excellent. us. Excellent. And and as far as you know, there's um, there's a lot of technology that's come out over the past uh, you know, several years that that's still tried and true. And there's new stuff. Where I'm going to show you a bit of everything here. Um, but there are high and low tech solutions for people. And, and what is the difference before you start showing things? Mm -hmm. What is the difference between high uh, just two questions wrapped around. What's the difference between um, high and low vision technology, and uh, um, uh, and um, it, is it expensive? And how can we, how can or how can uh, yes, how can we as people with special needs and uh, who who get services 
um, afford this stuff, knowing that it is, it can be expensive. Absolutely. So, so, um, so, so, I'll, I'll answer that question by by first saying, you know, when I say visual impairment, that's a huge spectrum. Um, you know, if there, you know, some people, uh, you know, they the, to drive in Vermont, you need to have a corrected visual acuity of twenty forty. Right. Um, and uh, and so if you cannot correct a 2040, technically that's that does not meet the driving requirements. And there's some field requirements there too. But you know when when we talk about vision loss, um, you know th there's a there's a wide spectrum from you know needing glasses that can correct the refraction so that you can see better, um, to maybe like in my case I'm I'm legally blind, which means my visual acuity does not correct better than 2200 in either eye. And I have no central vision as well in either eye. So, so vision. I have peripheral. I have peripheral issues, so I can't see on the side of me. Oh, so put us together, and we're we're set. That's yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's 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 yeah. yeah. So so I, I don't have any central vision. You have some peripheral issues. Um, you know, the, some people have spots of vision, um, cataracts, um, strokes. You know, all those things can lead to different kinds of vision loss. And so there's a wide variety of vision, visual impairments out there. And, um, and so for if, if you have what's sometimes called functional vision, we call it low vision sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then you can be legally blind, which means you're beyond the 2200 correction or you have more than uh, or less than 20 degrees field of vision. Um, and then you know, blindness, that, that term kind of covers a full spectrum of having you know, very little vision to having no light perception. Um, and so, so as I showed stuff today, I'm going to be talking about, um, you know, high tech solutions include technology. Low tech solutions are, are simple day to day things that you can find that, that can help. And so hopefully I can show you a wide variety of those today. So, okay. Um, okay. Open your treasure chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just to start off with, um, here I have a, a chart with lots of different tactile dots on it. Um, this is a sampler that comes from a a catalog called Maxi Aids, and um, as you look up and down the, the form, there are lots of different shapes, sizes, and textures and colors of dots that can be affixed to things like your washer, your dryer, your microwave, your thermostat, uh, your remote control, um, you know, all kind, whatever you can think of that could use a, a tactile locator button uh, or dot, um, this can help. And, and they even make dots that are even smaller than this if you need to have something very, very small, like on a, like on a cell phone or... What about braille oven knobs or things like that? Is that tactile situation? So, so depending on, on your appliance, um, sometimes you have um, knobs, sometimes you have buttons. Uh, you can uh, add texture to the knobs if you have knobs to help to point out where on and off is or a certain temperature. You could put a... Like on a, on a turning knob for a stove, you could put one of these dots at, say, 350 degrees and, and 450 degrees. And so you'd be able to estimate in between where 400 is or 420 based on where the, the other dots are at. Um, on more modern appliances, they don't have the knobs. And so you have to go with the dots on, on the buttons themselves so that you can find where to touch them. Um, it, and then also you can use uh, puff paint. Uh, mm -hmm. to outline where you need to touch, if it's a touch screen or something like that. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of different ways you can adapt your appliances so that they could be, you could be independent with them. One of my favorite ways to adapt a, a microwave is really not to mark up the whole microwave, but to mark the 30 second button. Because uh -huh. if you mark the 30 second button and you press it three times, you now got a minute and a half on your microwave. So you don't yeah. have to fiddle with it that much. You just go beep, 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 and you're warming up your cup of coffee or hot chocolate or whatever. Wow. <laughs> and not burn and not, and, 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 you talk to. And uh, <laughs> and uh, I feel that if, if you're visually impaired in an, a kitchen, mm -hmm. right? Cuz I've also worked professionally in a kitchen, but you know, and you get things adapted to you, you're not going you with with the knobs and if you know the temperature, you won't have so many accidents. Exactly. Either. It helps you stay safe. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, since, since, actually, since we're on the kitchen, I'm, I'm going to yes. Keep let's go to the kitchen, kitchen area because okay? we also do a, 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 a TV show called um, "Able to Cook," so this might fit into that as well. Oh, great! Okay, 
so, so this is something, you're talking about being safe with the stove. This is called a push-pull stick. And, uh, and so I'm going to describe it. Need you to put uh, it to uh, the camera? Yep. Um, it's, a, it's a long uh, metal uh, bar that has at the end a notch that's kind of in the shape of a Z. And um, the idea here is that as you reach into your oven, you can hook the rack uh, and pull the rack out with this push-pull stick mm -hmm. so that you bring what's in your oven out so that you're not bending over so much. And, and you're not burning yourself. Exactly. So your balance is better. That's what, that's, that's what my husband needs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll uh, we, can ask him, we can ask him for gifts later. Go <laughs> ahead. And, and then the, it's a joke. The, <laughs> exactly. The notch that's on the end of the Z here is faced um, so that you can put this notch against the rack and push it back in. So you have a pull and a push for the rack so that your balance is not off you, you're, you, and you're not burning yourself on the, uh, on the edge of the rack and things like that. Uh, of course, you'd want to have, you know, like the, the um, there's uh, oven mitts that go back past your, your elbows that, so you can be more safe as you're reaching in and out to, to pull the stuff off. But this push-pull stick, it's, it's one of the easiest ways to, to stay more safe on the oven. Um, this particular one has a, has a, um, a metal uh, rod on it. They also make it in wood as well. And the wood one doesn't hold the heat, so you're, you're less likely to get burned on the push-pull stick, too. Mm. Mm. Interesting. All kind of other. All right. Okay, now Mr. Now we have a whole bunch of stuff here. Mr. Chef there. <laughs> okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to focus on Oh, wait a on minute. Here. One thing I do not see. Um, is there a way, like, it, um, knives? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't have any with me, mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that we do at VAB is we teach people uh, knife safety skills. Uh -huh. And so we can help people to learn um, how, to, how to cut things more, more effectively. Um, and and there's, a there's a couple different ways of doing that. Um, you can really use any knife, um, and, and it's all in how you position your hands while doing the cutting. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of chefs will, will, will bend their knuckles back and uh, place their knuckles onto what they're cutting and then cut in front of their knuckles, and that prevents, with everything curved back, that prevents you from cutting your, your fingers. You can also use something called the bridge technique, where you kind of act like you're holding a can of soda with your hand, mm -hmm. and that creates um, kind of a, a a rainbow or a letter C with your hand and as you place that over the top of what you're cutting you hold down what you're cutting and you bring the the knife in with the the spine of the knife up uh, facing your hand and the the sharp part facing down and then you can cut between the 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 the, uh, the arc safely mm -hmm. without having your fingers cut I, I'd be happy to come back sometime and demonstrate oh you're more than techniques. welcome go ahead you can, you can. Okay. And, yeah. and then the, the, the other thing that helps with cutting is contrast. Mm. And so uh, having a cutting board that maybe is black on one side and white on the other, or having something like this, you know, a lunch tray. A lunch tray is a, lunch tray is a beautiful thing. I, I know that's Because it's <laughs> tactile from what I can it, You've see. got a raised lip, so anything that, that's going to be on it isn't going to roll off the counter. Uh, you can use different colors. Feel free. You can take a look at that one. Um, they, they, uh, they come in different colors, they come in, uh, in different sizes. Um, this is an orange one, that's a black one. So depending on what you're cutting or what you're working with, mm -hmm. um, you can choose the color that works best for you if you have low vision. And um, they also, I don't know if you brought anything with you, but like um, cups and bowls and has, have raised lips Have raised too. lips on them. Yeah, I don't have any of those with me, but, but you can get bowls that have a raised lip around the inside so that as you're, you're cutting things on your plate, it's not gonna roll off the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, um, and then a, a couple other things you can do too. Um, here I have um, a fry chopper. And so uh, you can buy this fry chopper at any Walmart, at any Ace Hardware, at any you know, the thing that I've, might be out I've, there. If I may interject, I've seen ones, I've worked in kitchens where they have one that's um, like, and you just, push down the thing and the fries come out? Exactly, that's yeah. the same concept, same concept. So, so here I have a, a potato that's inside the, the, the chamber, the chamber that's inside there. Mm -hmm. the, the catch is you wanna make sure the potato is smaller than the, the size of the, the, the grate that's gonna be uh, cutting. And I'm gonna turn this so that 
Um, as I press down on the handle, the fries are going to go towards I'm the I'm wondering, can you use that for cheese too? Or just fries? Um, so it's funny you mention that, actually. There, there, I, I have a cheese cutter that, uh, that I bought. Um, it has a little wire cheese cutter. And you can place the cheese along a line, and you bring the wire down, and it cuts it. And, and it's, uh, I can bring that another, another time to show you, too. Mm -hmm. um, if you have hard enough cheese, you could probably use this. If it's too soft, it might get a little uh, caught Yucky, up on the grate. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. But as I press down here on the handle, wow. it pushes the fries out the front. Wow. And Wonderful. so now you have you know perfectly made fries here. And one of the things that I've discovered recently that, that works really well for people with visual impairment is an air fryer. Mm -hmm. um, air fryers are quite... Why is that? Just, uh, well, the air fryer is really... Um, it, it, it's simple controls, and um, it, it avoids um, having to use the, the frying pan or something like that that, that has you know, oil popping and that kind of stuff. Um, it's a little bit healthier, and, and you know, the air frying stuff is a little bit healthier than than doing it on the stove. And, and what my wife and I love to do now is we, we run these through and we drop them into the air fryer. You know, just kind of mix them with a little bit of oil before you drop it into the air fryer, let it go. And uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes later, you've got some, a great batch of fries. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was you know, very safe in the process. Very little chance of burning yourself. Okay. Um, another nice uh, cutter that I've discovered at the hardware store, and, and the reason I'm showing this to you is because it doesn't necessarily have to be something that's been designed for the visually impaired to help the visually impaired. Um, this I'm is, confused about that. Can you explain? This the, well, no, no, you said it, it doesn't have to be customized. Yeah, yeah. so, so a, a lot of products are marketed directly to people with vision loss. Um, but one of the neat things that I found is that uh, tools that are designed to help anybody uh, can, can help people who are visually impaired too. Um, so, so that fry chopper wasn't designed for the visually impaired. That was designed for chefs and kitchens and things like that, but it's easily used by someone who's visually impaired, and it reduces the chance of having errors when you're cutting with your knife. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that make sense? Yes. And, and so this here, this is a vegetable chopper. Um, the, it's, I, I got this um, actually a price chopper. It was on the discount aisle. And what it is is a, um, it has a, a column in the middle with some blades that spin, and the top goes over the top of it. And as I pull the string, it spins the blades inside the ah, container uh, oh, wow. to finally chop something up. Oh, and wow. so, so what I have here... So you didn't modify that? Didn't modify it at all. It's, it, it's the way it came. And, um, and so here we have a pepper. And one of the things I love about peppers, especially if you're chopping it up, is you don't have to be very precise. And you can actually just tear it with your hand. Uh, you don't need to have a knife to, to, to necessarily cut the pepper down into the smaller slices. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up and I'm going to drop it inside the chamber. Take one more piece here. Mm -hmm. I love making salsa, actually. And, oh, um, yeah, with the tomato stuff. To, to, you, tomato, you can throw a tomato in here, you can throw onion in here. You put the top... On, I feel like I'm, a, like I'm on one of those shows selling products on, <laughs> on, like, on the, the shopping network. Um, and I'm going to take away the... It's only 1995. <laughs> Act now. Yeah, no, Act now, <laughs> and that's all you... And you get more. Exactly. <laughs> you feel like Ron Popeil. May so, he rest in peace. So those are chunks of pepper in there. Yeah. And I'm just going to take the string, the, the handle here, and pull on it. Five little pulls of the string. And when you open it up, inside, it's finally it is the pepper. pepper. Exactly. Wow. And so you can, you can... Is there a way, since, show that again? Uh -huh. Is there a way for, um, well, people with disabilities, as people with special needs as well, um, like... To modify the pull? Modify, no, modify the blade. Oh, modify the blade. Because, um, you know, being the fact that a person's visually impaired, you don't want somebody hurting themselves. Right, and, and so... Um, I'm just asking. So when you reach in and pull up on the column, there are two little blades there, and so you, you do have to be a little bit careful of those blades. Um, and so what you could do is, um, I have, um, I'm, I'm thinking about safety here. Yeah, actually, that's a great question. And um, in my box, <laughs> I just realized that it's in my box, there's uh, something called a no-cut glove. And, um, and a no-cut glove uh, is, uh, you, it has a, a material to it that's very resistant to cutting. 
and and um, and and you can wash up the gloves just like anything else. Um, you can buy them on Amazon very inexpensive. Yeah, when I used to work in a deli, they gave us the no cut gloves. No cut gloves. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what I would suggest is using a no cut glove um, if you were concerned that you might cut yourself on the blades as you're pulling it out. You can put the no cut glove on, reach in and pull that out. Um, so yeah, that would be my so, suggestion. So uh, what other kind of goodies did you bring? All right, some other goodies. Um, so we. <laughs> We have um, here. It's okay if we go um, over. Okay. Right. Uh, here we've got uh, different colored measuring cups. And so if you had low vision and, and you weren't sure which one was the quarter cup measure, the half cup measure, the full cup measure, if you could identify the color, which are, this is, these are bright rainbow colors, um, you could do that. Um, they also make these with braille. Uh, if you need to, and you could read the Braille to, to tell what it is. Mm -hmm. And if, if a person doesn't know Braille and their vision doesn't work with the colors, one of the things that I, I suggest doing is taking a serrated knife, and, and you could have someone help you if, if you have a challenge with it, but you can notch the side of the cup if it's plastic with one, two, three, or four notches, mm -hmm. uh, which would be the same as you know reading Braille, but you know it, rather than reading the number with the Braille, you'd be reading how many notches there are uh, to know what the size cup measure was. Mm -hmm. So lots, lots of different ways to adapt those. Um, yeah. And uh, here I've got pepper and, uh, and potato. <laughs> I'll set those to the side. Oh, wow. um, so here, let's jump into uh, medical management. Yes, me how, yeah. how do we deal with medical management? Go ahead. So, uh, so they, there's, there's lots of different ways to deal with medical management. There are large print uh, pill bottles and pill boxes that you can use to organize your pills with. But this is something that's come out relatively recently. It's called Script Talk. And um, it's a, a free it's a, service. It's a, yep, it's it's a machine. It's a machine. And they actually have an app on the phone now, too. Um, if you have a, can so you, if you download the, the, um, the app, you can put it onto your phone. And the phone would act like this base. But if you don't have a smartphone, you can get this base for free as well. And um, this is a service through uh, Envision America. They've partnered with Walmart and Rite Aid and Walgreens. So if you have, um, uh, I know Rutland Pharmacy here in Vermont has it as well. So if you have one of them as your, as your uh, medical provider uh, for pharmacy, um, you can have these bottles. If I turn it on. Script Talk Station Ready. So, so it said Script Talk Station Ready. And on this bottle is an RFID tag, which identifies what's Which means what? Uh, a radio frequency identification tag. And, it, and it's been programmed to have all the information on the label mm -hmm. able to be scanned. And so if I hit this button here, it's beeping. Patient, Joe Veteran. Medication, extra strength. Tylenol. 250 milligram tablet. Instructions. Take one tablet as needed for pain. Prescription date. December 15, 2013. And it'll, it'll read the entire bottle to you so that you can get all the information that's on the bottle. Um, and if you have to go back to this as previous. Rewind, fast forward. You can go back and forth in the message. Um, and like I said, um, the, currently they, they, they do have an app available as well for your phone. So if you have an iPhone... Do apps usually work or do you need a physical machine? Uh, the, the app works beautifully, actually. Um, I, I just don't have one of the RFID tags that I can use with a phone to demonstrate for you. Um, if you're interested in the app uh, or in this station, uh, you can talk to your pharmacy about Script Talk Prescriptions. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the service, and it's completely free to you. And uh, Walmart and, and the pharmacies, they, they have all the equipment. They just might not know it because no one's ever asked them to use it. And, um, and Envision America will work with the pharmacy if they don't have the equipment to make sure they get the equipment. Mm -hmm. So right. that's a neat service. Speaking about reading. Yep, I reading, see, okay. I see yep. reading and uh, uh, recording notes or school or anything. Absolutely, like yeah. Notes. We've got a couple of different devices here that can help with that. Um, so first off, uh, if anybody has um, doesn't know about the National Library Service, uh, now is book this is program. this with um, yeah National so so is this with the Braille Library or the National Library? I'm confused between the two. Sure. Uh, so so the Vermont Association for the Blind works with the local 
uh, office of the, the Library of Congress, which is called the National Library Service. Um, and here in Vermont, that local office is called the ABLE Library. It's located in Barrie, Vermont. And the ABLE Library, which stands for Audio, Braille, Large Print, and Electronic Devices, um, will provide you with a player. It's, it's larger than this. Uh, it's similar to this, though, where it's um, maybe you know, five inches across and, and seven inches long. And you'll get cartridges in the mail with books, the audio books that you can listen to. Um, you can also, uh, you know, and that's a free service that you can get these audio books. Can you sent to borrow you one for like if you're in college online, oh, or yeah. you? Can yeah, you, they, can they, you borrow that with no cost? You can request a specific title at no cost, um, and if you're in, and and uh, they have lots of books that are used in college. Um, there's another service called Bookshare.org, which I've heard of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you're a student, that service is absolutely free. And you can download electronic copies of the books uh, in, in, in print format. And you can make it as large or as small as you want, whatever contrast you need. They have uh, apps that will read it to you. Um, the library service also has books you can download. <coughs> and um, so from the, the ABLE library, you can have something called a BARD account. And that stands for Braille on Audio Reading Devices. Um, and you can download books onto players like this. I'm going to turn it on here. Technical difficulties, we stand by. I tested it before I came here and it said it had a 70% battery. <laughs> okay. All right, that's no problem. What I can do instead, so this. So explain how it works. Well, and, and I, can, I can demonstrate, um, I can demonstrate on here too. So, so this, this player, which was charged, I promise, um, it, it can read books from the Talking Book Library. It can take audio notes. Uh, there's a button on the side here you can press to, to record uh, voice notes. Um, you could, uh, I used to use this when I would leave appointments with clients. I would record what I did with the client and then I'd go type up my notes later on after I'd listened to what I recorded. Um, it can do text files. Uh, the newer version of it can, can also... You, I'm sorry, can you plug in earphones to that? It does have an earphone jack on the side, and you can plug in an external microphone if you wanted to have a better microphone than what's on here. Yes. Um, and, uh, and the newer version also has GPS available, so it can help you. You can punch in where you want to go in town, and as you're walking along, it'll say, turn right at the next intersection and so forth. So it's a, it's a very handy device. Um, now, I'm going to mention this. Um, <laughs> is So can that be... Given a, a, a discounted rate, because you know a lot of we don't want people listening to this segment or this show today to be scared of getting services because they're going to think it's expensive. So, so if you get services from uh, the the Vermont Association for the Blind or the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, um, you know w both both are mindful of the fact that people are on fixed incomes. Um, you know, so th there's with the, the services from the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, um, they have both services to help you on a vocational track mm -hmm. and also services that can help you if you are currently not able to work um, and, and you need to be independent in your home. Um, and if there's equipment that you need, they might be able to help you. I can't promise they can buy everything, but if it fits into the plan that's going to help you to be independent with your work, or with your, your independent living goals, um, often they're able to help if, 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 if not entirely in part. Um, with our, our services for older Vermonters who are blind and visually impaired, we do have a grant that can help purchase some of the equipment um, to help people be independent in their homes. Mm -hmm. we, we always, you know, because we're a nonprofit, we say if you'd like to donate to it, that helps stretch the grant dollars so more people can get things. Um, but if there's something that you need, especially the lower tech stuff, there shouldn't be a barrier to you being able to get it in some way. And, and we can help you figure out tracks for that to happen. Okay. So what is, the, what is that? Well, I, I wanted to demonstrate, um, and I, let me just increase the brightness on my phone here real quick, um, as much as possible. Do um, you want to ask any questions while we're um, talking here? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Take your time. Are you the, uh, Take your uh, are your devices helping the... People that are visually impaired and blind? 
Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it, the the it's it's funny because you know uh, I I'm I love my job. I go and I work with people and I show them these things and, and they want to hug me when I'm leaving <laughs> because mm -hmm. because they they, they ha, has yeah. and since we said that ha, has um, now because you know being visually impaired or blind has been hasn't hasn't been easy uh, hasn't been easy history wise. Oh no. Uh, can you explain a little bit about the problems that problems and not because we have loads of solutions here. Yeah. But what has been some, what has been the problems of um, people blind and visually impaired or you know because people with blind and visual impairment throughout time were put in institutions weren't mm -hmm. treated well. Can you explain a little bit about some of the history and yeah and then we can go back to some of that. Sure, sure. Um, from a historical perspective, um, it was in the mid-1800s that um, people who were, were blind and visually impaired started trying to, to um, better their situation and they would create societies of, of people with visual impairments. This is, started kind of over in the Engl England. Um, there, they, um, you know, Braille was something that had been uh, you know, put into production, and there were Bra there was Bra Braille by though, Louis very, Braille by Louis Braille exactly. Very limited though at the time. Um, so societies would get together and try to purchase, say, the Bible for people with visual impairments, and and, and Braille's uh, expensive. Oh yeah, and and and, uh, and and they would you know get together and teach each other Braille. Um, and so from the 1850s to the 1900s, these little organizations started gathering to try to improve situations. And around the turn of the century, you know, you had institutions like the Perkins School for the Blind and, and some other individuals who were starting to say, you know, we should actually formalize teachers to, to help people to become independent. Um, and, and in the beginning, it really was people who were blind helping people who were blind. Um, and and that, was the, that was the origin of, of, of rehab services way back when. Um, they called themselves home teachers. They would go and, and work with each other. Um, and then you know Perkins and some other institutions started formalizing. That's where you get the story of Annie Sullivan going to Helen Keller. Um, yeah. you know, she was one of the first teachers for the for the visually impaired. Um, and and, and really people was, got um, sorry yeah. people yeah. people yeah. had got yeah. people had gotten sick from uh, a, in terms of being blind from scarlet fever Absolutely. and other yeah. scarlet, scarlet yeah. fever. Yeah. Uh, actually, the, the, one of the most uh, malaria you know, famous, maybe one of the most famous schools that teaches people how to read Braille is the Hadley School for the Blind, and uh, the Hadley what's now with the Hadley Institute for the Blind, and that came from the 1918 flu epidemic. Uh, Mr. Hadley became blind because of the flu, um, and and so he realized there wasn't a lot of structure around teaching people Braille, and that's why he created his then through the mail braille service to teach people braille and then it's evolved over time. How expensive to is braille like to print? Like take, for example, taking a school textbook um, and a history book, for example, right? Yeah. And printing that, is it expensive? The, the, what's expensive is the device that does the printing. Uh, the embosser, uh, which embosses the braille onto paper, is very expensive. It's not like a regular printer. It's not like a regular. It's it's more like it sounds like those old dot matrix printers from the nineties. You know, the uh, rah, 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 you know, that's kind of what it sounds like. Except it's going, you know, like a like a a news like a news teletype. Like, like the feed back in the yeah exactly. You know, you know, da, 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 and now the news da, 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 that yeah. that yeah. <laughs> and and so this the, the embosser you know prints out that braille um, and. One page of print contracted in Braille is, is three pages of Braille. So it's three pages of Braille for every one page of print. And, so you end, and the, the paper's a lot thicker, and so you end up with larger volumes. But one of the neat things today, the, the, so the, the back to, to your question about what's the new technology out here, right? Uh, a digital Braille... Uh, so, uh, um, a Braille recorder, bra I've well, seen. Refreshable Braille displays have little pins that pop up and down and rearrange themselves into the Braille symbols as you're scrolling down a page of Braille. And again, the National Library Service is about to uh, give a free refreshable Braille display to anyone who needs it that qualifies for their services. Is there a course to learn how to use it? Um, yep, there are courses to learn how to use it. And um, you know, th so the, you know, technology is becoming very much more available. 
and through different avenues like the National Library Service and other means, we're, we're, we're getting there. And then things like universal design on an, on an iPhone or an iPad. Explain what yeah. universal design is. So universal design is the idea that something should help everybody, not just some people. And so... Um, Repeat Apple, that one more time. <laughs> That, that something should help everybody, not just some people. Example, website, since yeah. we're talking about the phone, yeah. website um, should have, by law, under the ADA, correct? Yeah. Um, should have a icon, you push it, or, or you know, with your mouse, and it'll make things larger. Um, but not all companies are doing that right now, right? So, so yeah, web design is, a, is, a, is its own area of, uh, and I'm, I'm not an expert by any means on web design but there's things that you can do to make your websites accessible to people that use screen magnification and screen readers and and if you don't do those things to your website like for example a picture if a picture doesn't have something called alternate text on it it's going to say jpeg or it's going to say photo one two one five 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 two three five two two which means nothing to people you know it's, it, it, it's monotonous exactly. i don't mean to laugh exactly. but, yeah. you know. but if you put a description into that photograph that says uh you know a grandchild playing with their grandfather and their dog now someone who has a, a screen reader can see this. even see videos uh Audio white screen with with flowers you know exactly audio description right and for videos so, so if you put that, that's called universal design, where you design something so that everybody's going to be able to access it. Now, Apple has done a really good job um, with their, their iOS system on their iPhones and their iPads. They actually design accessibility software built into them so that you can have text-to-speech and you can have magnification. So it has JAWS features. built in? It has a JAWS built in. It's called VoiceOver is mm -hmm. the name of its software. Mm -hmm. And, um, and Android is trying to do that too. They have something called TalkBack. They have a magnifier as well. Um, and they have people who are hired to work for them who are blind. They're helping design their software right now, mm -hmm. both Apple Since and Since you Android. said that, I see another recorder there. Um, uh, oh, yeah, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I just wanted to, to, to give context to this. Uh, the, I'm the, sorry, go this, ahead. This was the book reader that, that didn't work. Um, on my phone, I have the BARD app, which you can download for free mm -hmm. from the National Library Service, and, um, and it has a display that looks like a player, and when you press the green button... So, it has a book that I'm listening to on it right now, and so that's the kind of audio books that you can download from the, the Talking Library Service. And does Amazon, or, or uh, Amazon has audio books? Uh, but they the, cost money. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. are, is or or does the uh, Vermont Association for the Blind do you help companies like Amazon we, with we, you know we, with things like that? Our, our mission is to work with clients directly. Uh -huh. um, uh, we we don't work with Amazon and those people. I I do you know if 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 they ask for advice, I'm happy to give advice. But I, but they're not going to contract us to go make their systems more accessible. We don't do that. Um, we work with, but I would I would work with you to teach you how to download that book onto the the free Bard app on your phone um, and listen to that book. I could teach you how to do that. Mm -hmm. That's 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 what my my, my job and is. And that device is this device is called a talking label wand. Oh, you mean it's not like Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it has three uh, three buttons and a light. Uh, when I turn mm -hmm. it on uh, at the top button here. Mm -hmm. It's powered on, yay, versus the other one. Um, there's a red button and a green button. That The red button will turn the volume down. The green button turns the volume up. Um, and then if you take one of these stickers here and you scan it. This is a new label. Uh, and these, these stickers are tactile. They have a little tactile circle around them. I can record a, a tag onto this label. Start recording. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Recording completed. And then when I scan that sticker that was a new label before. Testing, testing, one, two, three. It plays the recording that I did. Um, and so this, these stickers can be put onto anything. Uh, you could put them onto your DVD collection. You could put them on your, um, I, there was a gentleman I worked with who um, was having a hard time 
with his ratchets, keeping them organized in his toolkit. And so we labeled the toolkit using these, these labels and so he could organize where he was putting his tools away to make sure they were in the right place. Um, you could uh, use it for your uh, food. You could use it for... Or like spices. Spices. Out. Yeah, you stick one of these stickers on top of a spice container and then you could swap the lid out. Container like containing garlic or pepper or stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, that would, yeah. As, as, as much as your imagination wants to work with, um, I, I know a person that uses these stickers to uh, organize their address book. Um, so they've now put a sticker into their address book next to people's names and it has the name, address, phone number of the people. Um, I worked with a grandmother who uh, put these stickers into a kid's book and she, she pre because she had a hard time reading the print with her grandkids on her lap. And so she pre-read the book, recording each page of the book on a sticker, put the sticker into the book, and then she sticks her grandkids on her laps, uh, hold, uh, well, lap, she had one lap, um, holds the book out in front of her with her grandkids sitting there and she scans the sticker and she's reading to her grandkid with her voice even though she can't see the page from you know 18 inches away. Right. That um, kind of reminds me some years ago there was something called, um, I don't know it's like 1970s, picture page. Yeah. It's something similar to that where you can like, you know, uh, read with the book, you know, that kind of thing. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> any other, <clears throat> before we end, do you have any other goodies? That well, I, I have lots more goodies. Um, you know, we, we, we teach people how to use magnifiers. Um, this is a large uh, 3X magnifier. Mm -hmm. with a, has a LED light inside of it to, um, to you know, keep all that light in there. And um, so this, this is a, what they call a stand magnifier. Mm -hmm. The benefit to the stand magnifier is it's already, the focal distance is set. And it, by the way, the talking label on turns off its own battery, so it saves the battery. Um, the, uh, the, the stand magnifier, you don't have to worry about holding it the right distance. It's already in focus because the stand holds it there. So if you have tremors or something like that that, 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 that keeps you from using a magnifier, these kinds of devices can work really well. Mm -hmm. um, here we have a hand magnifier. I've seen that before. And, and, and they have a nice bright LED light on it. Um, and these are great to, to have in your backpack if you're checking the price at the store. You want to make oh, sure. Oh, you... my husband these. Yeah. <laughs> that's good for him. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be good for him. Yeah, exactly. Um, so those those are those are magnifiers. Um, if you have challenges with glare, uh, mm. we've got um, sunglasses. Now, how? Yeah, explain really quick how that works. So this is um, a, a company called uh, Cocoons. And, and, uh, I've seen those. And, yeah. and these are a variety of different colors and different frames. So if, if I can pull yeah. one out. Sure. Um, with the yellow thing. Mm -hmm. So example, my glasses, I'm just going to, if it's okay. Yeah. And that fits over the top of your glasses. Wow. <laughs> That cut what? the glare of the glass. It, the it's perfect. Yeah. Because it, it hard, there's like no glare there. There you go. So I'm gonna keep it on for me. <laughs> Go no, kill no, for uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and and so that, that what you just experienced is exactly what I want to see happen when I work with clients. I, and and so, you know, everybody has a different color that works for them that helps to cut the glare and, and sharpen the contrast. Uh, sometimes you need to have a pair for indoors if you have if you have a lot of glare problems, and and you can have a pair for outdoors when it's even brighter outside. Can this so this is working? Can both. Work indoors and outdoors. They can work them indoors and outdoors. Exactly. Yeah. I've I've got people that wear a certain one and they're in the mm -hmm. kitchen and then they, and then they go outside and they, and they use gray because it you know makes it more dark and things like that. And and there's lots of different colors here and lots of different frame styles. And uh, you can keep wearing it. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, no, it helps. Actually. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, um, that's okay. It, now, my, what? My husband loves you already. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're helping. They're helping. Um, now, with um, are there any glasses within that case mm -hmm. that can prevent headaches? Um, any, so if you could bring the case out one more yeah, time. Yeah, sure. Um, I could bring the case back out. Um, and yep. Um, so the, as far as preventing headaches, um, the, there's there's lots of different ways. So if you have macular degeneration, which is what I have. Yes. Wearing uh, tinted lenses outdoors helps to uh, mitigate how fast the macular degeneration progresses. What is macular degeneration? Uh, macular degeneration is where um, in, in, in the back of your eye, there are color receptors called cones. 
um, and, and black and white receptors called rods. And in the center of your vision, in the macula, that's where the densest population of those cones and rods exist. And with macular degeneration, um, because of genetics and other reasons, um, those cones and rods uh, disintegrate and leave behind scar tissue. And that, mean, and that prevents the eyes from working in the center there, which means that's how I have no central vision. It's because the cones and the rods have, have scar tissue, scotomas left behind. Mm -hmm. um, and the more light, UV rays and so forth, that get into your eyes, the faster that progresses. Mm -hmm. And so when you're outdoors, and you should And it stops be, headaches. To... Exactly. And so if you wear the sunglasses, um, it reduces the progression, it stops the headaches, mm -hmm. or reduces the headaches. Um, you know, the, the more irritation to your eyes, the faster you're going to get those, those, those vision-related headaches. Um, and so you can reduce those by wearing sunglasses. Um, you know, Even if it's all year? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. I, actually, the winter time is the best time to wear sunglasses because here in Vermont, the snow reflects all the light coming down from above. So even though you don't have a bright sun, you might have more light coming into your eyes than normal because it's reflecting off everything. And so I wear sunglasses in the, in the wintertime, um, and, uh, and it just, it helps. Sunglasses help. Uh, and, um, yeah, because I know there's different colors here. Yeah, there's different colors. So if you want to, so, uh, now for some people, um, if, if some people, uh, you know, red uh, really makes a difference. Um, people with a vision condition called a chronotopsia have found that, that red really, really helps. The, those are people who are colorblind because they have no cones at all. That's what a chronotopsia is. Um, and, and red really helps to sharpen vision with the lack of cones. I, I don't know how the science works, but that's, that's how it's worked. Um, but if, if things, sometimes people when they have a visual impairment say everything got really dark. So you can have a color, a color with your sunglasses that reduces your headaches, but actually kind of brightens the room too. So yellows and, and uh, oranges, uh, those will help to brighten the, the environment around you. Um, gray and green and, and um, uh, plum and those kinds of colors darken the environment. And, and depending on your eye condition, you might need it a little brighter, a little darker, but controlled by that, that filter. Okay. So, so um, what other goodies did you bring? Okay. Because <laughs> we kind of um, I understand. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, well, the, I think the, the last main thing I haven't shown you is this. Um, and what this is, is a little organizer. And, and uh, this organizes, in this case, there's lots of different buttons on little safety pins. And, mm. the, and the, the buttons uh, have different shapes and mm. colors. There's flowers and triangles and squares. And you, know, you, you could go to Joann's and you could get a whole bunch of different buttons. Joann's is a place where you can get like um, yarn. And yeah, that. yarn and fabric and things like that. Um, so, you know, Walmart has. Piano. Yep. What was that? Sorry? The hook rugs. I used to do hook rugs. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Can speaking about hook rugs or, or needlepoint, um, person that's visual impairment, can something like this or like be, you can organize your yes yarns and different stuff. So so I'm I'm going to describe this box. It it, it kind of it, when I showed this to Lawrence earlier, he said it looks like a tackle box, and I, I agree, it's a lot like a tackle box. It's it has several little um, square pockets um, that run the length and the width. Them? Yeah, and um, without spilling. It. And the idea is that you can organize uh, different hobbies. Mm. You can organize different kits. Um, this kit was designed for someone uh, to be able to identify the color of their clothing. And oh, oh. so you know, if, if you if you're not able to identify the clothing by you know visually. Um, you want to be. You want to match your clothing. You want to have the right top and the right bottom and things like that. Well, when you run your, when you uh, put it on or take off your clothing, you can have like a little dish on your on your dresser that has a safety pin and one of these buttons with the different shapes, and you can safety pin that to your clothing so that when it goes through the wash and you pull it out and you're organizing it, you can feel the 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 um, the, the button that's on the safety pin to know what color or pattern that clothing might be. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, and there's also devices that can scan your clothing and tell you the color too. Phones yeah, if people have problems, if people yeah. have problems with that, exactly. And so if you had neuropathy, yeah, it can be like a, uh, a you know a fashion designer device <laughs> all at once. Exactly. Like what goes with yeah. what? You know. Yeah. There's, there, there's a free app uh, that you can download for your phones called Seeing AI, 
and it can mm -hmm. identify color and patterns and things too. Oh, cool. And, um, but but uh, little kits like this can really help people because when you're visually impaired, you need to make sure that you're extra organized. And also, and I thank you for coming today because this takes out the myths of being visually impaired or <laughs> blind because, you know, uh, well, no, okay, well, one of the things is that people can get scared. Like if they're first uh, visually impaired, if, if they're first um, having issues of being visually impaired, um, this is to take out the scare thing, you yeah. know, not to be scared of exactly. that. Exactly, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, th th there's a lot of myths and misconceptions about vision loss. And, and since yeah. we said that, what are the misconceptions of people who are, or people who are, um, that, are, that are visually impaired or blind? Well, um, so, so there's, uh, there's been studies done that have, have, have you know, stu studies done to say, you know, what, what do you feel about visual impairment and blindness? And what we find is that um, a lot of people have misconceptions based on the way they were raised. Mm. So um, if their parents believed that people who are blind were helpless, that was passed on to them. If their grandma or grandpa, when they went blind or visually impaired, only sat in a rocker in the corner of the house for the rest of their life, they thought that's what it meant to be blind. And, and that's not, you know, the, the, there's, there's lots of, you know, with, with the technology and the tools and the resources we have now, um, you know, if you're blind or visually impaired, you can still cook independently. You can still clean you your can house live a, independently. Li you can yeah. live a life. You can live your life. You can, you can be can, married. You, you can, can have... Yeah. I've got a wife and three kids, um, and uh, I, I have no complaints about my life. I've, I, I have every opportunity uh, afforded to me. Um, but it, it does take living your life a little different in terms of being a little bit more organized, being a little bit more deliberate uh, in the way we plan to do things. Um, you know, using the technology that's offered is, is a big part. If we resist the technology, it can't help us. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you know, you, you're, you're not, your life isn't over when you have a visual impairment. And, mm -hmm. um, and so... Uh, and with that said, can um, you tell us uh, the number and address where people can reach you? Absolutely. Um, yeah. If they have, um, if they want services. So, so our main office is located in uh, Burlington, Vermont, and the address is 60 Kimball Avenue in Burlington, South Burlington, Vermont. Um, I'm, I'm based out of the Berlin office, which is at 13 Overlook Drive. It's in the AT&T building on, on uh, Route 302 there. Um, and uh, the number that you can reach us at, if you have questions, if you have needs of any kind, you can call us at 1-800-639-5861 and the extension to talk to is 214. That's Andrea Hirschberg. She'd be happy to answer any questions you have and connect from, you with whatever services um, you need. Well, we would like to also thank you mm -hmm. for joining us on this edition of Able to Learn Air. If you would like more information on the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, you can uh, go to www.va. B is it B A B V I? B A B V I, you got it. B A V wait. B A V V B A I'm sorry. W dot V A B V I dot org. You got it. That uh the website once again is www dot V A B V I dot org. And if you also would like information on um some of the things that you have seen here today. Please make sure to speak to Mr. Dan Norris. And um, also, if you'd like more information on Maxi Aids and their uh, services as well, um, you can go to www.maxiaids.com. That's www.maxiaids.com. Well, this puts an end. And what is the um, number again? Uh, for, for VAB? Yes. It's 1-800-639-5861. Okay, that's um, that's eight hundred two. Well, eight hundred. That's one eight hundred six six nine six three nine. I'm sorry, one eight hundred six three nine five eight six five eight six one. That's one eight hundred six three nine five eight.
sixth one. Um, this puts an end to, uh, well, before that, we would like to say um, special thanks to um, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont and many others, including um, the including sponsorship from um, uh, Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, and also partners, um, the uh, Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired and Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Abled in On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Abled in On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yachad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity. Able Dinner on Air has been seen in the following publications Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www com. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter.